As more games demand players' time and concentration, I'm always on the lookout for bite-sized experiences that offer fun in shorter bursts. The newly released Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire seems to embrace this concept with its short rounds of deck-building combat, enriched by a dark narrative and charming characters. While technically a roguelite, the game adeptly balances progression and challenge. Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire introduces a story mode centered around the main character, Arya. However, the narrative scenes are brief and scattered throughout the campaign, which diminishes some of the emotional impact they could have. It's frustrating how just when a 15 second story scene is about to reveal something crucial about the characters or their situation, you're left on a cliffhanger, forced to play through another set of stages to get more information. The game keeps you curious about what's happening, and the superb character illustrations had me invested in seeing the adventure through to the end. Arya, as the protagonist, is intriguing, because you don't know much about her, but you feel a connection as you guide her through this nightmarish ordeal in her school. Themes of fate and friendship emerge as a cat named Sylphie guides Arya through each mission. However, the brevity of the scenes makes it challenging to remember the events, often requiring your revisit to the gallery to recall the story's unfolding. In summary, the story is decent if you pay close attention, but the gameplay is where you'll spend most of your time. Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire is a deck builder roguelite that boasts intriguing mechanics to deliver a genuinely enjoyable experience. The introductory tutorial is exceptionally helpful for new players, guiding you through the game's nuances and basic strategies to build upon later. Each stage comprises a group of missions, and after completing a room, you can choose your next destination until you reach the end of the series, culminating in a boss battle. The rooms you can visit include phantom fights, shops, treasure hunts, or student rescues. These choices lead to strategic considerations as you need to manage your health and deck size. Many of the rooms provide extra cards for your deck, and while you have a card limit that increases over time, you will eventually exceed it. To continue playing, you must rest at camp to heal, but you must also discard cards to reach the limit. This system forces players to constantly adapt their strategy as they incorporate new cards into their attack. Before delving into the cards themselves, there are two campaigns to choose from, separated by the Blade and Mage class. The Blade class follows a more traditional approach, relying on a base strategy to conquer foes. In this mode, buffs and debuffs become crucial in later missions followed by powerful melee attacks. The Mage class demands a deeper understanding of cards and strategy. It requires you to use Arcana energy when taking actions, and the placement of attack cards determines the energy cost. Support cards add energy, necessitating a delicate balance between managing your health, energy, and understanding the card descriptions. The variety of cards is impressive, leading to changing strategies after each mission. As new cards are introduced, you'll discover ways to create combos and pair them with your existing cards. Crafting decks that deal debuff damage while boosting your shields and agility is just as feasible as creating a powerhouse deck of powerful cards, with longer cooldowns as the trade-off. The game's developer seems to have a deep understanding of the genre, as the card descriptions are engaging, and require consideration of card placement on the field, secondary effects, and even the phase of the match. Building and using decks with these effects is a highly enjoyable aspect of the game. After each match, you receive rewards, including different types of gem currencies earned during normal gameplay. These can be used to purchase items, heal your character, or revive Arya if she dies. There's also currency for acquiring new outfits. While the game's roots are tied to mobile gaming, I didn't find any options for premium in-app purchases, so if you want those cute costumes, you can earn them through gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, it flows seamlessly with battles never overstaying their welcome, and it's easy to save and quit back to the main menu at any time. If you crave more action, there are arcade modes and custom matches to continue earning rewards and strengthening your deck. It's worth noting that there are various debuffs, but the descriptions aren't always easy to find, leading to some confusion when dealing with them. At one point, I was affected with several debuffs and had no idea how to respond, which ultimately resulted in my defeat. Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire is a game that can be enjoyed in short bursts or lengthy play sessions, offering a well-balanced experience across all its systems. The roguelite mechanics are accessible and don't impede natural progression, and the diverse cards create excellent moments of strategic and challenging battles. While the narrative delivery could be refined, very little should deter you from enjoying the cathartic action of Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire. Noisy Pixel is giving Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire an 8.5 out of 10.
Thanks for watching, and thanks to our Patreon subscribers for helping to keep our independent operation going. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers working hard to give you the latest news, previews, reviews, and more. Go to patreon.com slash noisypixel for details on how you can help, and like, comment, and subscribe to keep up with our future content. <laughs>